to describe to oh me why it is you showed people amazing gameplay slices during funding and then nothing for two years before yeah. showing what can only be described as RuneScape made in pain and then almost immediately <laughs> yeah. closing your studio without showing anything ever again. I'd sincerely love to Oh be my god, what is this? Oh my, I, I would have to be like nine years old to, to think this isn't a joke. It's the biggest fan favorite and a story that I personally Chronicles need of to Elria. see an to before I'm satisfied. For those unaware, Chronicles of Valyria was one of the big MMORPGs to ride that initial wave of Kickstarter success. The numbers back then weren't absolutely mad. They only raised $1.4 million US. That's a lot of money. But they still made it one of the biggest Kickstarter games to date. I bet it and is. And clearly indicated people's interest for what they were trying to build. People, yeah. The success of the campaign translated into four years of additional funding $4 million. on our website without kicking fees back to anybody else and presumably Five. four years of game development to go along with it. Oh my However, God. no game was ever delivered. In fact, not what? only was no game delivered, they pulled some of the most ridiculous things, the most cynical moves I've ever seen. And that says a lot if you follow my channel because <laughs> I've seen some shit, especially in my recent foray into NFT, uh -oh. blockchain and play to earn gaming. Yep which has been a great source of entertainment so far. Chronicles of Valeria originally stated the game would be delivered in December of 2017 for the original goal. So it's late. I, I feel like, so it's a, it's a little bit late. Okay. Of $900,000. It should be really soon then, right guys? The goal post stating that they knew the game would cost much more money than that. And the idea of the Kickstarter was instead uh -huh. to give them enough capital to deliver an MVP, a minimum viable product, and to show that off to investors, presumably then receiving the funding required to get the game over the finish line. That However, despite them receiving the money that yeah, they thought sense. they needed, the game was never picked up by a single investor for a single penny, even after receiving Do double- Do you want to know why it wasn't picked up by anybody? It's because it looks like trash and it's boring and there's nothing unique about it at all. It's like you could make a better world with Skyrim. Actually, that's being generous. You could make a better world with Oblivion assets. All the funding couldn't find an investor. Even when receiving five times the funding, no interest at all. At the end, they'd received over $8 million, that's a lot of almost money. 10 times the amount they thought they needed and they couldn't interest anybody. In fact, they- Bro, Biden, this inflation shit, bro. Oh my God. Like money is just losing value so fast. Like, bro, like we were gonna have the game out, but then Biden came out and he started doing all this like inflation shit and we, we can't do it. So we need more money guys. Like, I mean, you know how it is. Couldn't even interest their audience anymore. It wasn't for a lack of time either. They originally stated they need one year to get it into that shape. Yeah. And yet four years later, nothing. In fact, nothing would be a stretch okay. because it seemed like they went backwards on what they were showing. Makes sense. And that would indicate that they... Oh, wow. I think I saw this. This was a phone game that came out in 2012. I remember this. It was called uh, Chronicles of Magic. Uh, it was oh, Actually, it was Magic Warriors 3, uh, the Dragon uh, Apocalypse. <laughs> Fucking is Fable One? No, Fable One looked better than this. This game, straight up, this game wouldn't have even looked good in 2007. Had much less than what they made out. This whole concept is a much more damning indictment than even the surface level indicates when you consider yeah. games like Dream World managed to bag over ten million dollars of investment from multiple different firms. I don't think that's fair comparison because the people that were in Dream World were like well connected, affluent people. So they were able to get investment from probably you know, it's like, oh uh, oh uh, dad, could you can you see if some of your business partners want to invest in my game? It's gonna have like fucking NFTs in the future. And like, you know about NFTs? And dad's like, yes, son, I sure do. By the way, how do I use this phone? Am I, uh, is it upside down right now? And so like, dad's got no fucking idea. You know, he sold this idea to some of his dad's friends who can't even operate their fucking smartphone telling them that NFTs are gonna be the future. <laughs> yeah, the only NFT those guys have is non-functioning testicles. Very fucking true. And so listen, it's not a surprise that Dreamworld got funding, okay? Like, of course they did. 
and that's a game that has one of the most ridiculous pictures you will ever hear it sure in your does. entire life and a front man who couldn't be more comedy if he tried yeah oh, oh it's me is this real i was running with my earbuds in and i got hit by taxi cabs twice uh, and well, I, I well I needed, my beard needed. looks good Why in that video. Why not just buy a helmet? He got hit by the two times he got hit by a taxi. <laughs> Was it the same one? Oh my god! Like usually it's like you know I, I got this idea for a product because you know this is a problem that I have. Not I literally just can't stop getting hit by cars. Different way. So in case you missed what this man just True. said, his solution to being so unbearably stupid that he was running into oncoming traffic, not once, but twice <laughs> while running with earbuds in, wasn't to just start paying more attention to the road, but to subject everyone around him to whatever shitty music he was listening to at all times Wait, what? by designing a speaker that mounts to his chest. But that's not even the best what? part. Hey there. Now getting back to Illyria. The money- Oh my god, I forgot all about this. I forgot all about this, man. That was some funny fucking shit, man. Did he go through the Wowly? Yeah, we'll look at some of that. Uh, remind me about the Towly tweet after this and I'll look at it. The time in the goalpost being shifted, showing of no progress. These aren't even the most damning things. The worst came at the parody? very end no. where they put up a sale for items and land mm -hmm. within a game that nobody even had seen existed literally days before announcing bankruptcy i feel like this is kind of what happens is that whenever a game starts selling virtual real estate for real money that's whenever you know the game it's over it's over you had a good run uh things went pretty well but that's it uh so 10.0 and wow yes exactly like that's 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 in my opinion i feel like that's like the um that's the sign and any money that was earned was just taken they never even acknowledged that this happened they knew before they even made the sale that they couldn't cover that month's payroll or even the building's rent Smart. that they were using as an office and not only that, live, live but each, they released the only gameplay. So you got to live each day as it's as, as it's your last day. Live each day like it's your last day, guys. Anyone ever got to touch the literal day before closing the game yep. studio and firing all the staff? No one had played anything from the game. They'd hardly even seen gameplay for, for four years. And the day before is when they dropped out this stinky turd of a tech demo, <laughs> which looked like you could legitimately throw it together in four hours as a complete novice using out-the-box features from either Unreal Engine or Unity. They acted like this was a huge milestone and proved all the doubters wrong. As a reminder, the participants in this test are bound by NDA and cannot share screenshots, video, or other materials. They are permitted to let Discord display their game activity, so don't be surprised you see people already playing Chronicles of Elria. More playable experience are, are planned for up to speed. Your pledged continued adventures in life, both actual and fantasy. Oh my god and this was going to be you know good things to come and then five days later posted a huge wall of text that if you didn't read all the way through with your monocle on you likely wouldn't even know the meaning of they managed to hide about halfway through that they were in fact closing the studio although they oh they're doing the filibuster okay i like this this is a really really good idea uh this is what they do you know whenever you click that um you know do you agree to the terms and conditions and then on page seven part three uh subsection b it says that they actually own everything in your computer you know, but they didn't see that. You, you didn't see that because you didn't read it. Use terms like entering the abyss and made it into some kind of narrative piece. And then, of course, Jeremy, the CEO, went and clarified. <laughs> yeah, they thought it was a patch for the game, but it was a patch for real life. On Twitter, he, quote, shuttered the studio. Then a Discord group ah. popped up, literally called Class Action for COE, with the sole purpose of suing him for lying to them for years and he very quickly pulled out his gold medal in mental gymnastics okay. and claimed that he never said the studio was closing. True. He would, in fact, still be delivering the game that he sold people on. Absolutely. Which of course and whose fault is it? It's COVID's fault. That's right. And hey, guys, you've got to wear a mask sometimes. Listen, we can't be expected. Listen, we just have to, because it, we were going to make the game, but COVID happened, and now we're going to take your $8 million and we're just going to, we're, 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 we're nothing, you're not, you're not getting $8 million. But it's because of COVID. I mean, you know how COVID is, right? I mean, come on. 
everybody knows is impossible because if you couldn't do it in four years with eight million dollars and 30 employees how are you going to do it in any amount of time with no employees and no money it just doesn't make sense does it after this no. the lawsuit started to progress and jeremy spent the last two years creating a dog shit pie that nobody wanted and role playing as if everybody does he claims that himself and one developer will be able to deliver this game and that this game would then somehow contribute meaningfully to releasing the main game of which people paid for called chronicles of valeria oh okay so basically i see i see what he's trying to do he's basically saying that well you paid for a game but there was not an explicit statement that you paid for this game in this context so he's trying to lawyer them i see the old bait and switch you know that's a good one i like that that's cute worth a shot yeah listen i mean this dude's got eight million on the line he's got eight million riding on this man like of course he's gonna try to play it out despite that game being developed for four years in unreal engine and this new one being slapped together in unity with matchsticks and calm I can't even begin to go over the levels of delusion and lies, the ridiculous narratives, the obfuscation, the six years of material that he pretends doesn't exist, and of course contradicts almost everything he says now. The fact he thinks people believe when he says the MMORPG is so close to being finished, oh, and yet- It's almost there guys, you just like, just hold on a little bit longer, I just have to get the money from the Nigerian prince, and so like, I just need you to give me a little bit more money, and then I'll give him the $10,000 that will allow him to give that to the bank, and he'll get his $10 million, and he'll give me $5 million. Just, we're just so close guys, it's just it's just gonna be 10 more years i mean days 10 more 10 more days until we're done and listen i, I feel like the kickstarter stuff you know i told you guys about how like people that get scammed deserve to get scammed right uh sometimes i don't agree with this like i, I think that people that fucking like people donated and this is a legitimate product that was advertised there's no scam here like yeah does the game look that good no it doesn't look that good but it's very fucking clear that this game is something that people believed in and this dude's taking their fucking money and he's going over the fucking moon. No, I, like he needs to be 100% held accountable because I think that these people, there is a plausibility. I think there's a realistic plausibility that a reasonable person could have seen this advertisement and thought to themselves, wow, this looks like an interesting game. I might try and play it. Or I might try and support it. And I don't think it was uh, it was not stupid. Uh, like, yes, obviously the game is rudimentary. But it's a new game. You know, it's people's responsibility, not the scammers. I think that basically it's judged on the scam. So, like, if somebody gets scammed, it's like if somebody says, hey, if you give me $10 today, I'll give you $20 tomorrow. And then you give him $10 and then you show up tomorrow. He's like, where is he? Maybe that's your fault. You know what I mean? Like, maybe that's your fault. So, but what, what, so where is he, you know? But no, for real, that's what it is. And, and so, what I'm trying to get at here is that I think that there is a certain degree of, like, responsibility people have to vet things. But I think that, like, with this, this looks like a plausible game. Sure. And and, and the guys scam people. It's like it's on Kickstarter. It This sucks. I, I hope this guy gets his ass beat. Not not physically, right? But it's a metaphorical ass beating in the court of law. I can't show anybody this game, and instead he's going to show us a different game in a different mm -hmm. engine. And the fact he thinks Chronicles of Valeria will actually release in 2024 without a budget, without a team, you know, it, it's obviously just Bro, lies. Kira, he doesn't think that. He's saying that for deniability for court reasons. He's saying that so he can stay true to the, quote, promise that he had that he was going to make the game so he can uh, rationalize keeping the money. That's why he's doing it. it has nothing right. to do the with fact what is, actually thinking. If the game was even remotely close to being as flushed out as he claimed, he could, at any point, have just threw up a test server, showed people it existed, yeah. and perhaps would have received more funding or investment instead of closing the studio without even trying. He didn't put up a fight. This was apparently his life's work, his mm -hmm. dream that he'd been concocting in his brain for over a I bet he was. He's dreaming like, how many of us dream of having $8 million? 
Have you ever thought about what it would be like to have $8 million? Man. Why don't you quit your job? Like, go buy a new car? You know what? I'm going to go to Wendy's. And even though the drinks are expensive, I'm going to still get a large. Decade. And he sold people on this. And, and people bought. They gave him money. They funded his dream. And instead of fighting for that dream, he basically just went out with a complete whimper. He just said, oh, we're out of money. You know, I'm not going to show you Oops. anything. I'm not going to try and substantiate anything. Yep. It's just over, guys. That's it. He honestly disgusted me how flagrantly he treated the people who gave him that money for this dream. And now he continues to insult their intelligence with this absolute farce. So that's obviously a very long backstory that if you follow this, oh, if you yeah. are one of those fans, the then you shit. will be aware of all of this. But it is necessary as context because realistically, the story is so in-depth and it spans so many years that you might have forgotten some of the key details. You know what the best thing about these games are? Is that the truth is that these games and the drama around the Kickstarter for the game, you can almost guarantee the lore for that is better than the lore that they would have come out for the game itself. You understand? Like, so, like, it's, like, really, they're creating a, it's, like, it's a, it's an MMO, it's a narrative, but it's just not in the game. It's real life, and you're a real character in it. <laughs> Surprise! The, the numbers, the timeline, and things like that. And, of course, today, there is an update from the man himself. First, though, I would like to forward the message I received from our overlords and why this video needed to be made. Praise, brothers. The Shadow Council has heard rumors that one of the largest threats to our organization has reappeared after many moons passed. Who is it? We thought this foe vanquished for good, the proof of the Council's efficiency. But alas, he was hidden from us, shrouded in some unnatural mist, nay, a fog of his own making, preparing for war. This individual represents the greatest threat to the members of this great Who organization. He presents words that pass from Falk Tong, the ultimate deceiver. He rallies support yeah. from the weak-minded and seeks to avoid the laws of these mortal lands. I beseech all Shadow Council to heed my words. The deceiver, known as Jeremy Caspian Walsh, must not be allowed to further contaminate this hallowed industry Who with his vile machinations. Go forth Jeremy. and spread the word. The Council will not forgive these deeds, and we are Legion. As for the update, I'm going to give you the cliff notes, because Caspian is a master of using technical terms and long sentences to tell you the absolute bare minimum, or just nothing. See, here's the problem, right? Is like, anybody who sees this is going to think it's legitimate. It's a balding man with a beard in his 30s talking about a fantasy medieval MMO. Like, the stage is set... For other balding men in their 30s with beards who like fantasy MMOs to be taken advantage of. You see what I mean? Like, it takes one to know one, right? I mean, yeah, true. Like, this is, it's like you can't put somebody on here like this because it's just, it's, it's too good of a trick. <laughs> Oh, this man could take the recipe of an omelette and stretch it into a 100-page short story. He, should he goes over some spreadsheets and flowcharts he's made, which are totally something you want to be seeing after six years of development and not something you would expect from a pre-production of an indie game. He impressively shows us a video. You know, I, uh, I, I took a class in this in, uh, in, in college when I was in business school, and um, we did this in the second week. Yeah, this is like uh, the project, like we, uh, like the first week, like we did this the second week. And we had to have, actually, we had to have it like be uh, in like certain types of uh, fucking like language so it could be translated to code. So, <laughs> dropped out third week. No, I actually, um, I remember the teacher we had was this Romanian guy. And like my favorite thing about uh, people from Eastern Europe is that they're assholes and that they, they, they're not sorry. Like they never apologize. And so the teacher, uh, he went and he, he gave us our final exam. And it was so long and so hard that people legitimately asked him at the beginning. They said, can we just do part of this? Because this is so long. And he said with a smile, he says, you can do partial work if you would like partial credit. And then he just walked out of the room. And there was a girl who was like, she's like about to fucking cry. And like, I remember, bro, I, I barely even fucking finished that shit. Like, it's like everybody else fucking failed. That shit was so funny, man. 
It was great. Yeah, it was yeah, big dick energy. I know, man. I know. Video that indicates this man has yeah. made dozens of flowcharts and spreadsheets, which Bass? honestly, I was the only no the joke, guys, this blew me away. I came into this update thinking we would be seeing nothing, you know, like usual, just just no substance. Like you see how many graphs I make in class. Like I, I was the only person, the only person, the whole school got an A in the class. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's like high school. Nah, this shit was real. Like it was a, it was an upperclassman uh, thing too. Uh, and so uh, she messed up the curve. Uh, I, I think actually he did grade on grade on a curve, but I, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, I, I I knew a lot about that, and uh, that was like the only thing I was good at really, because like the other time I, I took this other class it was a marketing class. All we had to do was learn vocabulary. Like I, I was just the worst class ever I ever had. And then like halfway through the class, I think that the teacher realized that it was fucking stupid, and he just decided that he was just going to teach it his own way. And he just told us how to like make business relationships and how to fucking write a resume. He just completely changed the curriculum of the class halfway through. It was an auditorium class with like 200 people. He just decided he's like, fuck this. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a, the second half was the best class I ever had. It was great. Whatsoever. But you really proved me wrong here. And upon seeing just how many templates he has in this folder, I just had the biggest change of heart you can imagine about what he'd done with that $8 million mm -hmm. and the likelihood of Chronicles of Valyria being delivered. If he has this many spreadsheets, if yeah. he has this many templates, I, I can't believe that there is no game. He then goes on to talk about art. And this is the part that really cemented the fact that they totally had a product and didn't just incom. Wow, uh, that's incredible. Um, what type of uh, plant is the dog? Is it a Merle dog or is the dog's name Heather? I, I mean, uh, you know, like, I mean, which one is it? It's dogwood. <laughs> Potentially waste everybody's money for four years. Oh, he God. shows a whole bunch of pre-made assets that yeah. he bought on the Unity marketplace, which likely Incredible. cost him a couple hundred dollars. He wow. then explains to us what store-made assets are and why- You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of somebody who actually in that class, we had people that did this too. Um, it, it's, they, they do their entire semester project the night before. A and they bring it up and they present it in class. And I remember every time that I would see one of these people, because like this is a, if y'all are still in school, here's a bit of advice. Always go after one of those people. You either go first or you go after them. So, like, as soon as somebody comes up and they're like, uh, so, uh, fuck it, uh, they got, so, like, World War II was really bad. And, uh, there was this one guy, he had, like, this red cross thing. Nobody liked him, okay? We got rid of him. He's gone. Except some people think that actually he's in Argentina and other people think he's in Antarctica because they think he built a base underneath the ice. And it's like, wait until that guy finishes his, pro his, his presentation and then go right after him. And it will guaranteed increase your grade by at least one letter. Exactly, he's using them. Now, I'm just gonna outline because some people get this twisted. If you're an indie dev or even a bigger studio and you use store assets, I've absolutely nothing against that. Fair play. I think they're there for a reason. PUBG they make sense this, to I'm use. Pretty sure. And especially when you've got a limited budget or a smaller studio, why reinvent the wheel? Exactly. If, if something fits your game's aesthetic, go wild, bro. It makes no difference. However, when you've employed 30 people for four years and mm -hmm. had $8 million, the fact that you're now, six years later, buying plants for your game, I just, I can't logically put the pieces of this puzzle together in my head. Surely you would really you can't logically put it together. Really? I wonder I, I wonder I wonder what it really was uh, surely surely they've been working hard on this. I mean I mean it, of course I mean it couldn't just be a huge scam, right? I mean it couldn't Kira's trying to be nice. Yeah, I know he's trying to be nice and you know he tries to be a nice guy. It's a fucking scam. It's a fucking scam. Everybody should get their money back. I see something like this and I think wow this is cool. I wish they made a game like this. There's other people that think that, and they give this guy 50 bucks. And they say, hey, good job. Go for it. I, I want to see what you can do. And then um, they don't see shit. The money's gone now. Exactly. Why are you complaining about how he spends his money? There's literally rich fake influencers everywhere these days meddling in worse concepts in a gaming world. Listen, Savage Loaf. We know who you are. Okay. 
we we know we know what your tricks are you you're not going to be able to get away with it this time okay jeremy you want to try and do this you want to try and play this game get on your alt account is that it huh make you assets or purchase those assets back in the day to use as placeholders from the unreal store the client you were of course originally using for development of the mmo people paid for uh -huh. i don't understand how we're six years into this game's development onto a different game now and your dev blog is showing us you've recently purchased grass i had my covid booster on sunday and i had much more coherent fever dreams than this concept in front of me right now he closes out this dev blog by essentially saying that they will have more updates coming out as well as playable tests for kingdoms of Illyria. And, of course, that they're going to post another dev update on July 12th, 2022. Absolutely. Which, as you can tell, I absolutely. absolutely can't wait for. I just love these. I really wish Jeremy would... I love these, too. As I said, I think this is... I think the drama... Let's be honest. You look at this fucking piece of shit. Thank God that it's not being made. Because the drama about it not being made is better than the game could have ever been. Yeah, it, this is already better come back though on video because there's nothing quite so enjoyable as watching this man just talk absolute fucking nonsense on video uh, mm -hmm. about what he's doing with his project i'm gonna end this update as i usually do with a challenge to jeremy and an invitation Lion jeremy Ted. directly to you if you truly do have chronicles valeria as close to being finished as you've repeatedly claimed please boot it up on a live stream show us what you've got surely Four years of Surely. development was enough for you to get some semblance of a game that would be real easy Surely. to display to us and prove my suspicions wrong. You could prove a lot of people in the community wrong. You could even probably make the lawsuit go away by just showing people you actually did what you said you were doing. I invite Surely. you to contact you me privately this, right? and clear up any misconceptions or confusion that you believe I may have. To describe to oh me why God. it is you've showed people amazing gameplay slices during funding and then nothing for two years before yeah. showing what can only be described as RuneScape made in pain and then almost immediately <laughs> yeah. closing your studio without showing anything ever again. I'd sincerely love to oh be- Oh my god, what is this? Oh my- I, I would have to be like nine years old to, to think this isn't a joke. Like, oh my god, what is this? This is- it, it's- it's like RuneScape without the nostalgia wrong here and that you actually have an almost completed mmo and it can release and people can get their money's worth that would be the best case it's scenario like Witcher 4. but you've got yeah. to do something more than present to us store assets in another engine for a game no one cares about man just show us chronicles valeria the game people actually care about and paid for it seems like this story is going to go on for years jeremy himself has said he's yeah. going to release chronicles valeria in 2024 and it seems he has no intention of giving up at least not while the lawsuit is still progressing so it does seem like i will have content well, he can't he can't give up while the lawsuit is progressing because after he wins the lawsuit then he's going to give up because at that point he will have proven in court that he took the funds with uh w w in good faith he has to make a good faith effort to do that to not be legally liable as soon as he gets done with that bro jeremy is gonna go he's he's gone like he's got we don't even know who who is jeremy like see ya yeah true he's poof gone yep every few months for the next couple of years at least going over what caspian's saying about kingdoms and chronicles valeria yeah. so there we go hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully i'll see you on the next one stay safe out there jesus we out. christ I, I oh my god I, this, this is just it's I, I don't even... What if he actually finishes the game? FOMO? Oh my god! If he actually finishes, we should buy a plot now! Because if he finishes the game and then we don't have the money... Oh my god, we would lose so much! Yeah, like, let me see. I'm gonna pull something up, okay? Um, Where is it? Tally? Where's Tally? This is one of the leaks from the new expansion. Did you guys see this? I'm going to pull it up. Oh, by the way, this is a video. I was going to watch this later. This is a video from Kira TV. I'm going to link it again so you guys can see it. Okay. Oh, that. Yeah, there we go. Um, Kira is the real MMO investigator. Exactly. Yes, he's doing a very good job. I think he's doing incredible. I'm very, uh, very glad to see that. Uh, Dev's a little embodiment of wine, Ted. Well, they're just trying to get money. I mean, that's all there is to it.